this is what Christmas decorations looks like uh, for home automation enthusiasts. <laughs> Hello guys, this is one thing I didn't expect a new device from my kid, and it is called Son of Mini Extreme. I have teased this a little bit on my second channel when I received a small care package from Son of, you want to catch out, it's there. Uh, but now that I had some time to actually take a look at it, connect it and test it, I am happy to share everything I know about it with you. Over the time, Son of Mini series has changed quite a bit. The mini series meant to go behind the wall switches, and soon after the Wi Fi versions were released, mini series transitioned to Zigbee as well. Both, in both cases, the footprint was exactly the same. Not when it comes to Extreme, because Extreme Edition is, well, extremely small. So, how small exactly is it? Well, first of all, this is Son of Mini R4. The extreme part of it could indicate a new series of switches that's going to be released by it -Ed. None of that is confirmed, it's my speculation, but judging by other names like Elite and Origin, I wouldn't be too surprised if they are planning a revamp of the internal switches. At 40 by 32 by 17 millimeters, it's actually one of the smallest IoT relays I've got. I say one of the smallest because I do have a ever switch which technically it's smaller, but it consists of two parts, so I don't think it's a fair to compare both of them. So Son of Mini Extreme, well, it's tiny. Just take a look at how it stacks versus the original Son of Mini and a couple of other products from Shelly, which in the past were taking the crown for being much smaller. What's even more surprising, even with the size difference, the Son of Mini R4 still have enough terminals to get everything connected without the need to use and Wago terminals. And speaking of terminals, there are screw-in terminals, which they might be slightly tight if you want to join two cables together. For that, you'll need to split them. However, they're decent enough for the purpose. At its core, it is still the same Son of Mini. It is a single channel relay that connects to 2.4 GHz network, and it offers connectivity with a switch, whether it's a one or two or three way. It requires LAN and Neutral to be operational, so depending on your wiring standard in the location you are at, you're either going to be hiding it behind the wall switch or in the ceiling rows just behind the lights. As usual, before I actually got it connected, I decided to take a look inside and see what has changed and what are the new features that it's worth talking about. The device wasn't particularly hard to open, it's not sealed, it uses plastic clasps to keep the shell together and... Once opened, I've noticed how tightly everything is packed. Now, this is ESP32 device, uh, D0WD to be precise, version 3. Now, the ESP itself is on a daughter board, and uh, while the dev pads are present, the typical header for flashing isn't available due to the space constraints. I did notice a couple of dev pads that will help us to actually flash the motor, but you're gonna need a soldering iron to perform the flash, that's for sure. The relay itself is also located on a daughter board. It takes up to 10 amps, however there were no markings on the plastic casing, so I wasn't able to verify the relay type. Just note that the current rating is for resistive load, not the inductive load. Previously, the Son of Mini would have an external antenna with a small lead, allowing you to attach that antenna to, I don't know, an underside plate of the switch for better reception, but this time around, instead of a PCB antenna, we have a 3D antenna. I did test it a little bit, but as I have a really good coverage of mesh Wi-Fi at home, I didn't report any issues. Everywhere I moved with my uh, slightly clunky setup kit, uh, I had perfect reception and even covering the switch with a metal plate didn't really impede the signal all that much. So I'm confident that unless you are in extreme circumstances, you shouldn't worry about the range of this device too much. Let's put the casing back and start testing. Connecting it and pairing is relatively simple. Everything is neatly labeled on the switch itself and it has just enough terminals to get all the wires in the right places, reducing the risks of blowing up like I did with a Son of Duel to a minimum. 
What's really worth mentioning is that there are three different wiring standards for your wall switch, so it really depends on what is your wall switch like, and those gonna guide you through a correct installation. I mean, all three of them are correct, so you should have no issues there. As this is ESP32 based, the pairing happens over Bluetooth and as such poses no issues. So I was very pleased with that and within seconds I had a new device linked to my Ulink account. Since everything was functional and connected, I decided to actually connect the kilowattometer as well to see what is the power draw like because I'm more and more conscious about how much I'm going to spend on electricity and I'm pleased to report the device draws approximately half a watt of power when it's at idle. It's not the smallest amount of power, however, it's pretty on pair with what I've seen so far with Wi-Fi connected devices. It's been a while since I've used the Willing, so I was pleasantly surprised that it looks differently now. Uh, when pairing a switch um, like this, you can now assign an icon and make it a little bit more custom and indicative of what is the relay connected to. So I quickly assign the light bulb and uh, proceed with checking everything out. I'm pleased to say that the latency, regardless of which way you're controlling the switch, whether you're doing it from the app, associated voice assistant or the switch, it's really minimal. It's probably thanks to the fact that it uses a local LAN control by default. Whether I was using the app or switching the light using in-wall switch, everything was updating promptly and I was satisfied with that aspect. Poking around the menus, I discovered that you can use three different modes for your physical switch. You have a traditional toggle, push switch and a follow mode to basically match the type of the most popular wall switches that you might have on your wall. I already mentioned local LAN, but this is not the only local feature. A Mini R4 also supports Ewilink Remote, which is their own in-house connectivity program that uses no internet and no LAN to actually speak between devices. It means if your local network goes down, the devices can still talk to sub-devices listed on that list. There are only a couple of them right now available from the Ewilink store, so you'll have to pay attention to what is compatible with this particular protocol or what's not. Another thing worth mentioning is the fact that you can disconnect the relay or detach the relay from the physical switch. Just in case you want to use that physical switch for something else and leave the relay to um, over the app operation. All the available features are mainly associated with the Ewilink account, so you'll have access to stuff like inching, available up to 24 hours. There is a power recovery with additional delay that you can use to delay uh, restoring the power state of your device, push notifications to your mobile device, or voice controls via different voice assistants through relevant skills. Sadly, there is no mention of Son of DIY Protocol 2.0, which I'm personally upset about because I like taking advantage of that whenever I can. But if that's going to be added, that's great. But so far, I have no further information about this. At this point, you probably wonder when and where. And here's one thing. This device isn't available just yet. A person from IDEA told me that the device is going to be launched sometime in the first quarter of the 2023, so in a month or so, maybe a little bit later, and I've been given one to test it out and share my feedback with them. But don't be disappointed just yet. I've got actually good news for you as well, providing you are not stressed about the physical size of a Sonoff Mini R4. If the original size is fine, ITAT will be offering a discount on Son of Mini R2 series to probably get rid of the existing stock as they will be replaced by the R4 series. So if you wanted to get a discounted device at lower price, now is the time to check out their store and make your purchases. I know what you want to see next. You want to see me flashing the smart on it and figure out a way to actually set it up as a new personal device with your own custom firmware. And I promise I'm going to look into that. But for now, it's going to be on my desk waiting for this to happen. So if you are interested in that video, then you know how YouTube works. I'm I'm not going to explain you all this. I have a couple of social media links there listed below so you could follow me there and start a conversation. As for now, big thanks for Sonoff for sending me this early so I could share the information with you. And let me know in the comments what do you think about this device. Are you excited to see a new series, the Extreme series? And what other Sonoff switches would you like to see having a makeover like this? 
that's for now. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.